Just like our first kiss and our first day of school, we all like to imagine that our first video game was some special defining moment that shaped who we are. Except when you remember that your first kiss was horrible and who is honestly excited for school. As much as I want to say I played this obscure hitting game and I discovered this great cult classic before nobody else. Yeah, the first video game I played was Super Mario Brothers for the NES. But that's when I was around 3 or 4, and I really didn't get into gaming around then. It wasn't until I was around 7 or 8 that I really got addicted to gaming and could appreciate them for what they were. So what a better way to kick off a new series where I talk about some of my favorite video games than to talk about the one video game that got me hooked onto gaming. That game being Spyro the Dragon. Of course, I played other games between Mario and Spyro, but nothing really hooked me until this game. It was the first game I obsessed about and drew pictures of and wanted a toy of Spyro and all of that. This was the first time I didn't view video games as just something to pass the time. This was something I wanted to do for hours on end. Honestly, I only had four or five PlayStation 1 games for the simple fact I would play this lone game over and over again. Fun fact, I didn't even own this game at first. I played the demo disc over and over and over until the game came out. And even then, I only rented it every other weekend. And it got to the point that I was renting it so much that the video store just gave it to me for a discounted price. Yeah, I really like this game. So what was it about this game that hooked me so hard as a child? The simple fact is that it was just a fun platformer that had a great cartoony style and was genuinely funny and silly. The story, while simple, has a lot of charm to it. Nasty Nork is jealous of the dragons, so he turns them all into crystal and steals their treasure and turns it into his own personal minions. However, there's one dragon who was too small and wasn't turned into crystal that can stop Nasty. Oh, I'm sorry, is it not clear? It's not like it's the title of the game or anything. It's it, it, it Spiral the Dragon. The thing I like is that even though there's only two major cutscenes, the dragons you free help give a better sense of the world of the dragons and who Spyro is. Well done, Spyro! Keep up the good work and I know you'll fulfill your destiny! Destiny? I just want to kick some- Just toast those enemies and collect the treasure! And what a rich world it is. There are a ton of varieties in the levels, ranging from ice caves to swamps to what only I can describe as a rainbow stream. They put a lot of details into what each world is and what it means to the dragons. Welcome to Peacekeeper, Spyro. Look how our treasure has been turned against us and stolen. Recover our treasure, Spyro. Collect treasure. Got it. Another thing I liked was the way they told information to the player. Yes, dragons are just collectibles, but they also hold valuable gameplay tips, often in very humorous ways. <laughs> Spyro, did you see a man dressed in blue running around here? He's a thief, and he's stolen a dragon egg! You've got to track him down and, and get that egg! Run! Run! <laughs> I'm getting a little winded! The only part of the world that ever upset me as a kid was I always was annoyed because they would have these beams around the level that's supposed to be a force field to hide the invisible walls, and I would always just want to break through and just charge forever. And now I get annoyed by the fact my iPod isn't big enough, I'm doing this crappy YouTube show, and my Hot Pocket is cold. Puts, puts a lot in perspective. Um, excuse me, I, I, I may need a minute here. <laughs> Well, I called my therapist and my number's blocked again. But luckily I have my happy fun time go-go pills. Wow. There's that rainbow. Now, because I was a kid, of course I was gonna like a bright cartoony style over something more gritty and realistic like Metal Gear and Final Fantasy. That being said, I still think the game really holds up well even after all these years. It's a little rough around the edges, but the cartoony style really suits the game well. The music also helps create that magical, fun sense of wonder to help make the levels feel even more magical. Though, it is kind of weird, because every time I hear this... All I 
can think about is the fact that the whoa, 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 just stop, 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 you don't, you don't need to get into it, dude. It's common knowledge at this point. Did you know gaming? And everyone's done it. All right, just the, the Amanda Bynes show uses the same music. It's weird. The '90s were weird. Whatever, just, just move on, dude. Seriously. But, but, but I, I, I have all, I have all these notes. I, whatever. Well, enough talking about the game without actually playing it. I do that enough on my other shows. Let's get to the gameplay. Much like other platformers of the day, you had to collect anything and everything you saw. Trapped dragons, dragon eggs, treasure, all had to be collected for that elusive 120%. Because remember children, poor math is why our economy's in the shitter and our money's the equivalent of dirt. 120? Really? Now, even though Spyro can only charge, glide, and breathe fire, the game does a nice job of offering tons of enemies that you can only kill by charging or with fire. There's also a couple levels that offer temporary upgrades like Supercharge and Super Flame. They're a small touch, but they definitely make you feel stronger for a brief time. There's also the flying levels, which have you collect or kill certain enemies or objects before the time runs out. And while not amazing, they do break things up and really do make you feel like a dragon, if for a brief time. However, there is one move that is so valuable, so important, I couldn't have beaten the game without it. It's a move I still use to this day, where you charge, jump, and as you land, charge again. The move I call the Baba. Look, I was seven, alright? I didn't know what else to call it. Friggin' love the Hababa, man. As weird as this may sound, my favorite part of this game isn't the levels, or the collectibles, or anything else like that. It's a simple fact that, to get health for your friend Sparks the Dragonfly, you have to kill these little creatures found throughout the levels, who explode into butterflies which he then eats. My favorite one to kill is the sheep, because for some weird reason, this game really hates sheep. Overall, this is a fairly good game to introduce to young children or those who have never played video games before. It's got a ton of charm, and while in hindsight it's kind of easy, it's never so easy that it becomes boring. It's got the perfect amount of difficulty for those who are just starting to get into gaming. And yeah, sure, Mario was technically my first, but Spyro was really the one who got me addicted and wanted me to play more and more games. I mean, I grew up with him. And yeah, now he's kind of like that friend you had in grade 4 where you've lost contact, but you still want the best for them. Even when he's been kicked out of his own game series, I, I really have no idea who any of these guys are. I think this one is Paco the Parrot. I think. I'm Viral Benny, fondly remembering Spyro the Dragon. I think I got it.